Yes. So when we start, we'll have a lot of props under our the lining of our back. So when they're horizontal, it helps out the thoracic chamber. So I encourage you to try the block right next to your bolster. So when you sit on top of the block, you want to sit with really a sense of the tailbone. And then I brought back in the beginning, right? So I don't spend a lot of time with that pressure on my, my rear of my pelvis. But consider that this is the rear of your pelvis and this is the front bones. And we're trying to work with getting these front bones to go the opposite of their daily habit. And it's basic nature of a restorative setting is to line up our props and use them to support us in phases of um, receiving wellness. You could think of that as each of the practice points is a phase. So in this first phase, we're going to either let the knees stay bent for the first minute or so, or if you're very comfortable, you'll stretch your thighs down. Think of it as close together because that block, if you're using that, feels as if it's kind of a confining shape. This is one where I think a sandbag is really helpful on the front of the hip bones. And if your back is a bit tender and, and too tender for this shape, you can also go without these props under you and be flat and maybe have your legs up on a bolster and see if that will be helpful for you to enter your experience. I don't want you to enter with um, an uneasy feeling with your back. So I'm going to step the feet apart, have my sand across the frontal hip bones. And the focus today is on aligning the arms to access the ribs and the spine. So we're going to work quite a bit with the arm basic, good, sensible arm patterns. So I've got a whole bulk of blankets under my head. If it feels for you like it's too many, then you can always shift one back. But as you Grasp a hold of your belt. Feel the elbows in that goal post position. And then as you lift up towards the ceiling, holding your belt loosely, track the pressure of your hands as if this was a weight that you were pushing up. Notice your back muscles, if they activate or if they are pretty still. And as you slide your hands open and out, you're holding the belt now with a little bit more vigor, right? So I grasp the hold. And as I slide my hands out, my belt goes back. And I let the arms find a bit of a resting position, but I still hold the belt with some intensity, depending on what you're willing to venture internally through. And then experience and settle into the landscape of your bones. How do you want to set your feet? Are they wide? Are they closer in? And if the widening of the legs might feel a little bit more comfortable for your back, but there are moments that come in where you might need to bend your knees and then go back to the straight legs or stay with them bent. Let your eyes feel like they can lower and relax the brain into the experience of breathing. And how that might come into your focus is the feel of the inhale filling the lungs and the exhalation emptying and sweeping the lungs. Let your eyes center the attention on the areas in the body as if you're scanning primarily across the chest and then fundamentally into the back. So this block underneath you might still reinforce that back bend and it may be challenging. So if that is occurring and you feel kind of waves of pressure in the back, Notice if bending your knees eliminates that pressure. There's no problem with kind of backing up your training efforts with stretching open the core. And then once you resolve, you might stay with the knees bent. I'm going to stay with this. 
You might bring your soles of your feet together, your knees out in a cobbler's pose. And noticing the contours of the body, the rounded shapes, the movement of the hips, when everything is pretty symmetrical in the beginning. It's fairly balancing experiment here. Now letting that breath flow in, but maintain a slow and fluid experience of in and out breath. Sand could be on the front of the hip bones. It could be up just below the sternum where the ribs kind of break apart and the sand would influence your breathing strength. So you can always shift it. And if you're gripping on the belt, remove the grip of the fingers, let the hands open and then find that comfort with the fingers gently curling without any real direction into how the arms are purposed in this position. And noticing that the purpose is to be and receive the breath, the practice, the sense of arching in the spine. And now as we shift our legs, however your legs might be positioned, if they're open or their knees are extending the legs down, we'll meet at the knees pointing up with the feet so they feel that they are slightly wider than hips distance. And if you have sand across, I would remove that momentarily and feel where the knees can draw together. So noticing, especially if you've chosen to be flat on your back, for instance, you might feel when the knees draw together, kind of an openness around the sacrum. So there's a width at the back space that is experienced when the knees are in. That's kind of an interesting thing to think of when you're shifting around and shuffling your feet during the day. What happens in the back of the pelvis? But for this position, we'll bring the hands so they reach together, interlace the fingers, push the palms to the ceiling, and then extend your arms as they reach back over head. So the knees are together, the arms are reaching back. So there's a togetherness at the extremities, the legs and the arms. Okay, and I mentioned that we're focusing a bit on how the arms connect to the ribs and the spine. And I suppose the legs would be a big part of that too. Not, maybe not as much the ribs, but in the next shape, it will be. So as we bring the arms back up towards the ceiling, Feel if you can almost kind of pick up your shoulders off of the ground space. They might be slightly on the bolster, but it's like you're shrugging them up and you're trying to lift them up so more of your back pushes into the floor. Now use about 30% of your core muscles to get that back zone to press downwards. Knees are still together. And then move your arms open and reach your rib cage to the left. You're gonna roll out to the left and then take your block, shift it away, and then roll into your left side. And I would add either a block, whatever's kind of easy to get on the inside of that right knee. And we're going to take a option, two options today on this one. So option one, quick review, side sage. Walk overhead, perhaps. This will be the sketch of it. So quick overview. So side sage, or you're gonna take sleeping sage. So very different than we would normally do in home practice. Most of the time, it's um, a pose where you, you want it to have a, um, a sandbag on your back. So it's hard to get that at home across your back. So we're using this as a rotation. And I'll give you some awareness that we are gonna do several twists today, um, very elementary into a little more advanced. So this is a twist as well. 
So if you like twists and you like that cleansing feeling that comes from them, spring cleanse, you might take this twist now, the sleeping sage pose, or you might take side sage. So whichever works for you, whether you want to sleep or you want to have a little bit of length across your side and put maybe a sandbag on the side hip, right, for side sage or the rib cage, and then extend the arm overhead. So whichever you choose. Now keep in mind we're twisting, gentle twist, restorative twist today, but there is going to be a, a pretty good balance of twists. So if this feels the most balancing for you is to do the side pose first, go with side. Okay, but I like to give the option for those that want to, you know, replenish and really feel that spinal support. They're different. So feeling the complete connection into the pose you've chosen, beginning to arrive into it. If you have your leg um, with a ball on the inside, that could be useful. The block is fine too. And as you extend that upper arm, in the side sage, and those of you in the twist, you're gonna let your back completely open and soften. Yeah, sleeping sage is a little bit like a child's pose, right? In the back muscles and belly is easeful. So whichever speaks to you. Okay, feel how the breath is motioning internally and pressing into the level of your skin. Filling the body and experiment with the range inside stage with your right arm, perhaps. You're going to maybe open it. And if you're in sleeping sage, you're exploring how you can deepen the pose by letting the mind relax and receive that rotation through the spine. So you're choosing and breathing in the shape. And if it's uncertain for you, should you be in a twist, should you not, and you like to have that comfortable position of sleeping sage, maybe make sure that you have a blanket under your head so that the twist is not as tense in the back. It's open in the back. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a very deep twist, right? It's a very calming rotation. Okay, now a few more moments here. Settle in. Breathing. Okay, now when we explore coming up, it's different for each person, okay? If I'm in the side pose, I feel a little bit more uh, stress in my neck to move out of the pose. So I find I need to first remove the sand, which does cause a little bit of that um, pressure. So when you rotate, I want you to feel, no matter your shape, that you're coming out of it with a little bit of a spiraling of the spine. So if you've got that ball or block, kind of kick it away, bring your knees together. So we all are in the same variation. You don't have to freeze frame your pose, but kind of notice the spiral. So I turn and I come up and then we'll do a little bit of free play. So we'll shift our body to sit in front of the bolster and put our elbows either back or you can put your hands on the floor. Um, and windshield wiper the knees side to side. So I, I prefer elbows down on the bolster and I can kind of tip back. But as you shift your knees, right, notice the direction of angle in your pelvis. And, you know, one of the, uh, the issues, right, with the stiffness and the tissues with maturity, kind of that comes along, is the extremities and how we use them to access our spine and, you know, creating suppleness and hydration. So use them while you have them, right, your extremities that are operating. So when you come to center, we're going to lift up and we'll take, kind of always feel a little bit of core connection with your center when you come up. 
and then sit on top of the bolster. We'll keep all our stuff around how, as it is, but the basic sense here is that we straighten the right leg and we take the left foot and cross it up over the right, the right leg, okay. Now, if I have that foot across, you know, my foot's gonna turn, my foot turns um, in a little bit on this position. So I'm, I am trying to consider uh, keeping it as parallel towards the, towards the foot of my mat, but I'll do the best I can with that. But feel, if you force that parallel, it pushes the knee joint, right? So it's like, you wanna kind of follow what your knee is doing because your knee is angling this way. So towards the right, so it's naturally your foot's gonna turn in a little bit. Now, when you turn to the left, we'll hook the right elbow or we'll hold the leg. Holding the leg is a little bit gentler, right? The elbow is kind of, uh, it has a little bit more of a vigorous tone in the back muscles, but I'll give you a, a awareness that we are gonna do some tricep work, a little bit of stretching through the back of the arm. And this is the start of it. So if your arm is holding onto that leg, like you're holding and pushing it over to the right, you know, feel the, the section of the back muscles. It's kind of hard for you to see here, but I'm trying to, this isn't the perfect shape of it, but I'm trying to get you to get a sense of when your arm crosses, right? You're stretching the right side of the spine down and towards the, well, towards the lat muscle. And then as you rotate into the obliques, so feel two of those options, hugging and the hook of the elbow too and the pressure. And then notice how the direction takes you to turn and feel the volume of the breath or the lack of it thereof. It's hard to get a good breath on this one. The abdominal pressure is, is rather challenging. So I want you to operate on the level of focusing on your breathing. And that might take you into the shape. The best way is to emphasize the breath. And however else it looks doesn't matter, right? It's about the breath. So twists are deep focus points on strengthening your breathing muscles. And if you feel winded and you're losing the breath focus, then you've got to start to come out or loosen it up and that's okay. So take a few more seconds here with this turn. Feel the head on top, maybe feel the head nod side to side. Yeah, and then as you come back forward, we'll take the left foot front, slide it front, cross, if I don't trip over my legs, <laughs> cross the right foot in, and then your simple cross-legged, left foot forward or right, sand on the left leg. You're up on the bolster, so this is an advantage for your spine from the get-go. Although I have to admit I want my blocks. So I'm gonna get some blocks, or if you have a, uh, a bench or another bolster, you can use that on this position too. And we'll feel how the ribs are balancing with the breath. So bring the hands, if you're comfortable with the position of the hands around kind of the, the rib barrel, you know, you can feel your thumbs to the back, your hands are grasping. And then as you breathe, you expand, right? And let the breath be, whether it's your nose, your mouth, just focus on getting that to happen, hopefully through the nose. Okay, now as you tilt forward, use some good, supports under your hands, even if it seems like you can touch the ground, use a little bit of height to start. And can you keep those ribs moving with the breath or did they sort of stop and to go into a stretch? So feel if you can still emphasize the expansion and contracting is very subtle part of it, isn't it? We mostly notice the in-breath, right? That's like our start for breathing, but sometimes it's helpful to cycle through the out-breath, right? Because that's when the ribs soften here. Okay, now the blocks can stay going to the front. You might lean a little bit more into the shape to influence your left hip. You can also angle the blocks to the top right corner 
which is kind of where we're going with the practice right now, getting connecting. We're going to connect back to twist in a moment. So this is a little bit of that reach through the torso. Doing what's reasonable for you. If you're falling off your bolster, right, that happens. You slide a little bit to the front. You can always repossess your seat on the bolster. But I'm probably best to sit a little back on a bolster because the chances that you slide a little bit are pretty obvious. At least I, I slide a bit. So feel your bones. Maybe you feel the, the sensations on the hip. Maybe it's like a level, you know, maybe it's up to an eight that you feel a hip, but as you're lowering your chest down and that comes closer towards your legs, if you start to really round your back to go downwards, then it's not the right level for you, right? Doesn't mean you're not in the right class or anything, but let's say I try to lower down and I really round my back. I create a hump in the back, then I'm not ready for that. I have to stay up right now and let my spine and my hips stretch. And now we're coming to our next pose. So you're going to move your blocks so they are, they might be used behind you. I'm not so certain here. But let's come up to central channel. Okay. Stretch your right arm up. Just lift it, turn the hand to the back. Bend your right elbow and then lift your left hand and take a touch to your right elbow and feel if you can press it back a little bit. Now the little bit is the key. So just a little itty bitty push. Maybe it's a big influence, the little push. But can you feel if your back is gripping? Okay, so my back started to grip a tiny bit. So I'm gonna just back off a little bit with that pressure and then keep my right hand to my back and lower my left hand down, breathing, okay? Now bring the left arm across your chest so it just swings straight over lateral motion and bring your right elbow down to the left elbow and intertwine the arms and lift the elbows up there. Yeah, good back stuff. So. It's a nice kind of juicer for the shoulders. You know, you might feel it suctions them up a bit, like saran wrap on the shoulders. So as you lift up your elbow tips and you find how the spine is supported, really work with that lift of the elbows, feeling where it's the experience of opening in the back and not too much. So for some of us, it's barely lifting. And for some, we get fatigued pretty quick on this one across the blades. So then our breath gets labored and we need to lower the elbows down. So let your fingers be whatever they are, right? They might be gripping a little bit. They might be pressing together. Uh, everyone's arm direction is unique. So I can't experience, expe expect that we're all gonna have our thumbs on our forehead and, you know, having a salute in a pose, but get a feel here of the back. Okay, now unwind, so we got that idea. Take the sand to your right thigh, and now we're gonna cross the left leg over the right. This is knee, knee differences will come up. If you're right and you can't bend like this, it just doesn't like it, then don't do it. Stretch the right leg forward like we did last time, and you might be better off. You might find your spine is taller, okay? So bend the knee is nice for the, for the curve of the hip, right? So you kind of curve into it. So bring the right elbow to the left leg. Go ahead and get a hunk of your leg with the elbow, okay? Or hold it, hold the leg, not hold it, but hold, hold, the, hold the leg, hook the leg. And then as you reach your left hand around to the blankets, or you're going to really work on feeling the left sitting bone as well as the right, and then lift up the heart. And we'll be here for about 15 seconds. So if you can settle in for that abdominal breathing, 
and feel the movement of receiving the breath through the nostrils, the belly expands. And exhale, the belly contracts towards the spine. Now, as we start to release the arm position, I want you to turn back forwards, okay? And then as you uncross, uh, take the sand away, put the feet together in Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together, knees out, and then we'll take our sand on our feet. Now, blocks might be helpful for you right now if you're feeling like it's difficult for your back or it's feeling tight in the back to sit this way. You can lift up the legs quite high with the blocks under the thighs right next to the bolster. This is very comfortable. Um, and as we're here, I want you to take a belt and reach behind you to the belt. And as you grasp onto the belt, you're going to move your shoulders. Well, I imagine they probably should go back. They should go back. But when I move them back, it's as if my hands pump towards me, but my shoulders pump back. So it's like if I didn't have my belt, the action would be hands to you, shoulders back. I don't know if it looks kind of silly, doesn't it? But that's what I do is I just look silly. <laughs> okay. So the hand, now they, so the elbows have to bend. So I'm doing a very elementary version of it. I have my hands pretty wide on the belt and they're touching my bolster. My knuckles are on my bolster. So then I can really work my shoulders back. And now feel if you can lean forward. This keeps the spine pretty tall, that you can't have a real hump in the back here, but it could happen, could start to happen for some. So I want you to feel the shoulders moving back as if they're trying to move into the spine. And then you're leaning forward and leaning forward, and then you're gonna lift up your hands holding that belt and if it gets aggressive in your shoulders and your neck, then you've gone too far. And that just means it's going to be a while, right? Till that happens. Um, so work the shoulders back and there's no requirement that it will happen. But I feel plenty of circulation in my shoulders right now. Now come back and see if you can let go of that belt and bring your hands together, interlace your fingers. So you keep the palms open when you interlace your fingers. So they're not pushing in like a 10 fingered fist. So you're opening the hand and then you reach back and lift up the heart. Lifting up, tilt your left ear to your left shoulder. Try to keep the arm straight back versus tilting to the right. And then right ear to the right side. Feel that left side of the neck stretch. Good. Now very kind of clean, basic focus. Come back center. Hands are going to release, but feel what stirs up in the fingers and the connection from the arm bones into the hand bones. And then when you come back into the knees pointing up, you might still have sand on your top of your foot. I want you to bring the arms in front. Make sure you're on the bolster, not a little bit off, but on it in the center. And as you lean back, I gotta scoot a little forward. As you lean back, you're going to work towards the arms straight. We're not lowering on the back, don't worry. It's a core focus. And you slide your feet a little forward so that there is this kind of ripple in the center of the body. It feels like a core vein that's all of a sudden bulged, okay? And then as you lift up, I think there's occasion, come back to about five of these. Um, I would say something like that and then hear it later and go, what did I, why did I allow myself to say that? Oops, a core vein. Okay, that makes sense in the moment, in the yoga moment. So as you lean back, Okay, feel when you bring the arms and they move out and then you center back up. Okay, now hands move any blocks away and we'll take the side sage on the right hip down or the sleeping sage. Now know that you're, you're twisting quite a bit today. So if you feel like you've been, we're 
going to rotate on the other side, but if you feel like there's a lot going on in your back, that's really good. You want to follow the same decision the second side for, for all of us. So if you took side sage on the first side, then you'll go there here, okay? You'll use your block overhead perhaps. Those in sleeping stage, you might want to have a blanket under your bolster. You still have the legs in this pivoting position, so this left hip is up. I like a blanket on top, and then when I turn and I have this twist, the, what's really nice about this twist is the right side of my torso is completely supported on my bolster. Okay, and my head turns to the direction of my knees, right to the left, and then my spine is centering. Okay, so you choose. And then once you get there, if your elbows can stretch a little up so you can let the back muscles reach. Yeah, so those of you that do side stage, probably a lot more than the sleeping stage these days, right? You might find just to change it up is just good. It's just a good thing to shift on your restorative menu. Huh? Um, and even if there's no sand on your back, right? You still will find the circulation benefit. But I do know some of you are side sagers. We can't get you out of that opportunity. You'll take it when you can get it. So side sage has a blocker ball on the inside of that left leg and maybe a sandbag on the side of the waist. I don't know if you have somebody around the house that can come and put a sandbag across your back and sleeping stage, that would be nice. Let, let whoever's home know at a certain point, you'll need some sand, you'll holler, tap a bell. But with the side stage, I like this too, this, this length and the waistline. And this still is contributing to that hydration of the back tissues. Okay, so feeling as you motion into your pose of choice. Are your ribs moving? Either of these poses, sleeping or side sage, are they actually expanding even a small amount? Could be small sponges of expansion. But that's how the lungs move, right? They, they basically fill up and then they go all the way back and flatten out. So relax your eyes. See how the shape is moving with the breath, right? So it's not the very still, there's quite a bit of interaction with the gradual breath supply in the shape. So you wanna be here a good minute, right? A really strong minute to two minutes, maximum three because you might go to sleep if you go to the three. Now where you feel that waist, armpit, chest, right? This is important place of focus is armpit, chest. And it's, it's challenging to figure that out when you're sitting, the armpit, chest, that inner lift. So we can work with that when we're on our side or turning towards the floor. So explore when you begin to come out of this pose. Do you reach with your arms? You're going to work towards a spinal kind of spiraling. So you move down and towards the navel center and you turn. And as you come up this time, let's take the opportunity to shift, but this time we'll sit right up on a bolster instead of a windshield wiper. We'll come right on up, right up to the experience and cross that right leg over the left. So the knee thing is to me kind of interesting and probably not worth a lot of discussions, but um, the angle it goes is your foot, right? So be kind to your your angle of your structure, just be realistic in what you exp explore. The left foot is pushing, 
forgot to mention that you do want to flex your base leg. So feel that layer of connectivity through the heel. And then when you move your spine forward and the heart is more up than it is dropping. So you could use your hands on your bolster or on the floor, depending on your arm length, but try to get as respectfully up as you can in your ribs. And then you take the turn to the right. So I'm hugging my body to, I'm hugging the body, the upper, the core body to the leg body and kind of dissect that because it is like a different segment that you're connecting. Elbow connecting to the right leg, I find helps me feel the, the quality of rotation in my back. Uh, holding the leg might feel safer for some of us. Letting your head turn, tilt is fine. But feel the primary, the primary focus is the foot pushing in front and the elbow connecting to the right leg and the rotation. Okay, so good. So keep that turning and experiment with the abdominal muscles. Right? So you're pulling into the core, breathing high through the ribs, rotating to the right. Now with that strength, beginning to balance across your left side of your back, right? You can take these rotations in very small supply chains, right, into your body. So think of it as there's just this amazing array of awareness in, in the structure right now. So when you come forward again, you shift out of the position, you know, consider when you take the leg crossing, all we are changing up is the bending of both legs so that they are still sort of the, the right hip thinks it's doing something similar to the last position, right? It's just crossing and the knee goes open. Okay, so as you come back up to the center, the center pole of the spine, right? Back up to the midline, take a sandbag on that right leg and I keep getting my block behind me when I want this pose to have them in the front, but there we go. So get some blocks and put that sand up so it's, it's on the right leg. So it's on the hip that we're kind of inducing into this um, experience. So when your legs are in a crisscross, you're going to shift forward to start. So right now we're gonna go into the forward motion. Got blocks. Feel if you can hinge a bit at the hips. So it's different than rounding in the very beginning. It's trying to find those, that barrier at the thigh and the waist, and you're hinging so that you'll feel the right inner thigh and the right hip stretch. So if it starts to be a little more detailed in your inner thigh muscles, Right, and that kind of wraps around the hip and the leg. And then your blocks could go left. Well, they have to be moved. You could push a button and they might go over to the left, who knows? But as they go to the left, or they go forward, right? But forward means they go a little farther than the last moment you had, right? You're gonna stretch and your back could arch. What I would prefer that you do is you have more of a light extension of the spine. So it's gonna be more of a dip in the back. Then you have a rounded shape, right? So we're focusing on more spine extension. And our rounded shapes today are gonna to be things like, we'll come up to child's pose very soon. So we'll feel the back in that flexion into extension, so right here, emphasizing the right hip. Okay, now keep the sand on. If your blocks are to the left, come back to the front. 
Use that force of your hands into the block to strengthen into your back. So try to, the blocks are great. I mean, I can, we can do flexible stuff like maybe you could touch the floor or go lower, but just consider the, um, the strength ratio here when your arms are a little higher pushing down, that you're higher in the back muscles, okay? You know, versus rounded backs. So as we come back and we're going to move, so this side will take the left arm up. I'm gonna keep it real, I, just simple. Turn the palm back, bend your elbow, bring the right hand to that left elbow tip. And I suppose some of us might grab the elbow and kind of force it back because we wanna get that left tricep to kind of spring to life. So, you know, feel this. If you feel this in your back, like a cross-sectional con concern, then you might not put your hand over to the elbow and you might keep your right hand on your right thigh and do the best you can here, okay? That's okay. And if you want to get your arm to, to get a little more flexibility and range of motion here, you do not have to put your hand on your elbow, okay? It's a nice addition, it, it's deeper, but if it hurts you, then it's not a good option. Now, I like the hand to the elbow in some ways because it stretches my right side of my back, if that works for you. Okay, and now we're gonna bring that left arm across, put the right arm under, intertwine the arms, and let the elbows flow up. And now if you let your eyes close and you do an arm crossing, and you notice, Notice the arm sides, the differences. I like to do this and then back up and do the other side even within a minute and just feel across my back. You know, where is my circulation kind of open and fluid on what side? So use this position to support that. Now, some like to do, go with holding the thumb, like the hand that's higher, hold that thumb and then lift up, right, to stretch the hand. Some are gonna find that's a little violating on their hand issues, so, or the wrist issues. So find what's reasonable for you. Okay, now as you move your arms down, okay, give yourself a hug. Okay, wrap your fingers around to your, your back, sides of your back, and feel when you give that hug, the back muscles, the circulation through the back. You know, notice the open quality of your back when you hug, okay? You might have to be giving yourself some of those, okay? So now as we take the sand, roll the shoulders, get out of the hug, Stand to the left leg. We'll take the crossing, the final crossing, before we push back. But for right now, we got one more twist. So we're gonna put that right foot across the left knee. Both knees are bending. One is popped up and one is moved open, okay? So if you turn to your right, you've got a sandbag on the left side to root the pelvis. When you turn right, we're going to try to find that inner lift, lift the chest, and then you might reach the left arm to that right leg and feel a considerable twist. I feel a broader stretch in my stomach muscles, the obliques, the transverse abdominis, but you can feel these different abdominal layers in the twist. So if you're concerned about your spine's rotation, repetition today, what you might work with on this one is hold the knee instead of hook the elbow. And then feel if you can move your belly into the twist. So you're using your stomach to turn you to the right. So you don't have to push your elbow onto the leg. That is more assertive in your back. You could use your hand. Then you might need to tilt your ear to your shoulder just to be careful on the neck. And then turn with breath. Breathing on the exhale is the twist. And just before you visualize being an owl, right? If you get to that point, it's maybe a little far. 
will unwind and take a sand away for a moment. Take a blanket away. And let's take a step back. So we're gonna bring the right leg back and the left leg back. And we'll bring on our knees. This might take you a few to get here, but I want you to turn your bolster straight in front of you spine wise and set your knees on the blanket. And if you need two blankets, you could use two under your knees as well. Uh, but as you position yourself straight down, feel where the elbows lower on the floor. Do you want to keep them down? Okay. So let the spine have a nice, comfortable arch. It was just seconds ago you were in a twist. So now we're going to kind of revive the back from all that hydrating motion, mobilization. So doing some symmetrical work. So feel the knees apart. Now notice the farther out the knees go, even if it's small increments, if you let your head lean down and you breathe, which I'm assuming is occurring, you might notice that the, the arch in the spine, it doesn't necessarily get looser when the knees are apart, but the sensation and the nerves there are calm. Okay, so feel where the feet are separating, the tops of the feet on the ground. And then as you slide your hands back under your shoulder-ish, right, that zone, stay with this position. We're not pushing up right now. So I want you to feel your fingers open, feel your elbows by your sides. Okay, now as you slide your hands forward, find a block and place that, or you could put like a sandbag if one's closer, under your forehead if that's softer. And I'm going to actually put my block closer to my hairline, because it's a little easier on my neck. So I'm pushing my block up a bit, assuming that's the same on everybody. Maybe not, huh? Okay, so find where you can position that block. So yeah, it feels a little bit of pressure on your forehead, that's true. You don't spend your life with a lot of forehead pressure, except intra-pressure, right, from thinking. But let the weight lower down and then soften in the back. Let your belly move into the bolster. Now as your tops of your feet rest, your rear muscles are relaxed. Okay, slide the hands back and begin to come into an upward dog of choice. So for some of us, it's going to be very mild, like a little bit of a lift. Upper puppy, okay? And some will go into a full-grown upper dog, okay? So upward facing, isn't it? Upward facing. So the facing is the interesting part. So you are working your way towards strengthening the back. This is good elementary back, baby back bends, but now, as we hook the toes under, we come back to table and we'll arch, well, sorry, we'll round the back first, chin to chest, toes under, and arch the spine. Yeah. So then we round the back, we feel that lift of the mid back, chin to chest, and we gently arch. Okay, now next time we come back, it, for some of you, it's going to be a little different. What I'm gonna encourage us to work our way towards is to push the bolster a little farther in front. In fact, let's pivot the bolster so it's across all the way to the front of your mat. So you have lots of mat space. And we'll lean back and lift up the knees. Now, if you wanna keep your knees on the blanket, that's fine. Um, you'll find your position of support. Now, as I stretch the arms out, I keep the knees in a very strong bend, like I'm going to hop forward, that kind of idea with the knees. Now, when you feel that chest open and you feel the position of the knees, lower them down and bring the knees open, stretch the tops of the feet together and reach back to child's pose, whether you have your 
hips moving back to your feet. Let's say you come back and the crease of the knees is too much, really the bend is too, too deep. You might put a blanket on top of your calves. I prefer blanket on this one. And then when I sit back, it's helpful. Now I put my hands in a pile under my forehead to soften the back. Now, if this doesn't work for you, this version, you're no way you're gonna go into that, then you will likely need that bolster again, huh? You could put it across the mat a little closer and stretch your hips up. So they're lifted and tilted and the arms are on the sides of your head, okay? But stretching in front of you. So take the child of choice, the child choice, okay? The hands are supporting your head or your arms are in front of you on the bolster. And as you center your back, fully reach through the spinal column with the position. And just give it a few moments. If child's pose is a little challenging for your knees and you need the hips up, keep them up for a few more moments. It's a good pose to relax the organs, right? Open the back. And we're gonna be doing just a few standing variations, very few, very supportive, but this will kind of get the joints open that we've worked through so far. Okay, now suggesting that when you do move your body from this backward pole in the hips, that you'll take the hands forward. If you're on the bolster, you slide them off the bolster. And then those of us with hands on floor will place our palms down. If you have a blanket on your calves, get rid of that. And then let your right foot, simple step forward with the right leg, not just the foot, but the leg body itself, and get some blocks under your hands, mid to high height, right? So you've got a substantial lift with your rib cage. And then as your left leg is in lunging, well, your right foot is forward, but your left quad is lunging down. Take that right knee and really work to reach it forward. So we'll go alternating lunge and reverse lunge, toes up on the right foot. Okay, so give it a few moments. Move through that lunge with the knee on the blanket. If you need to keep it off the blanket, oh, that's fine but alternate pulsing and warm up your back muscles with that motion of the leg, the right leg, warm up the back, stretch through the ribs, through the front left quad, lengthen through the back body, through the arms. Okay, now as you come back to that forward position, knee above the ankle, Toes under, left foot, lift the back knee up, and then feel if you can position the legs. You might need to scoot your blanket in, but position the legs so they're parallel. And as you lengthen through that back of that right thigh, work towards straightening them out. If you must micro bend, of course, but see if you can really fully engage the muscles around the knees, both knees, even that left one behind you. Yeah, so those blocks might need to be um, supporting you higher. They might need to be lower. If you can get that right hip to stretch back a little bit and balance out the level, levelizing your hips, if you look back to the upper legs, and it seems as if above those, your hips are fairly level, right? Like if you could balance a plate on your back kind of level, then your blocks are just fine. Okay, but if you need more height, you put some blocks higher or you get a chair, right? Okay, now we just bend that right knee. And I want you to get a feel of your right hand to your sacrum. Okay, so if you get a little tippy, then you walk your right foot a little bit out to the right side, but you still have the toes forward and parallel. So if you get a little bit off balance. Maybe that block under the left hand needs to get higher, right? That could happen. But we turn a little bit to the right, so we create that rotation one more time. 
where we rotate the hip and we stretch back through that left calf. Good. So it's a pretty full um, series of movements today that we're doing pretty high density with the volunteer. So work with the rotation. Okay, and then as you turn back down, we'll take both of the blocks and we're gonna pivot to the left. So we'll turn our toes left. We'll take our blocks to the left side and move into a wide stance, forward bend. So I certainly have my, my, bl my blanket, if it's in the way, you might have to shift a couple of your props, but use the advantage of this wide stance. And then take your blocks toward like they would be for downward dog, right? But it's a little easier type of downward dog right now because of the length of the legs, right? They're in a wide stance. So this time we're in kind of a push back downward dog, which is a downward dog motion, right? You push back, your hips move back, and your head lowers down. Yeah, so coming into the shape, let the feet feel their connection to the ground. And if they turn in a little bit, you can feel that rotation at the toes. Good. Yeah, relax any um, extra effort I'm trying to force to get your body farther to the floor as far as your your head, right? Let whatever happens is meant to be as far as your distancing. So get a, get a feeling of the hands apart, stretching open the armpits, reaching the hips back and open, head down. You know, when the thighs maybe get a little bit kind of relaxed here, in some ways, parts of them do loosen. So when you shift your weight to your hands and blocks, you'll slide the blocks to the mat. So you certainly want them touching to the mat space. And then feel if you can get the surface of the, the front of the thigh to pull up for a moment here. Just get a feeling of that. And then scoot your feet in a little closer. So feel them so that they can be toes pointing forward for you. And as you move your blocks now to the right foot, so you're turning back to that right leg forward, I want you to switch the stepping of your feet, but let's take a forward bend for a second here. Step the left foot to the right foot to the front of your mat towards your bolster. And then let your knees soften and feel this standing child's pose, right? So my arms are dangling down, right? Some child's poses are like, um, you've heard of rabbit pose, right? Where you run that forward round, your hands are around to the back. It's a good week for rabbit pose. So feel your head, brain, space moving down. And if you need to hold the back of the legs or the blocks, perfect but doing what's necessary to feel your seat lifting up behind you and the weight of your head nodding forward and back. Find a still point, breathing into. Now bend your knees. I think they already were. And then take a block set under hands and feel the approach of your shoulders when you touch down. Step the right foot back, stretch the heel to the floor. Feel what that action is to get your heel downwards. And you appropriately put the blocks in. Now we're going a little backwards on this side because we're already up with our legs. Our knee is not down, right? We don't want to try to go in the opposite direction of what we've attained. So if your back foot is noticeably in line with the left foot, you need to step it a little bit out anyway. And it could be turned out, right? For some people that's appropriate. So get a feel how you can wiggle your waist, your hips. Make sure you can find a little wiggle room. 
If you can't get wiggle room, you need to get your feet a little farther apart. Okay. So then we take that reach with the torso, we lengthen. We try to really press into both feet, even though they're really far from each other, as far as they're going to get, probably from one another during the day. And, and then the left hand comes to the sacrum. If you feel like you're kind of tipping, that's natural. Then you might take your back foot and feel a little bit wider stance and see that if you don't tip over. That's not an ambition of ours today is to tip over. Okay, now turn to the left, left hand on the sacrum though. Turn to the left. Those of you that are antsy to get your arm to lift, go for it. Those that are fine with pressing down into the left heel and the left hand on the sacrum, stay with those connectors, right? Heel to sacrum, feeling the circulation and that depth into the seat. Breathe. It only helps. Great. So when you feel that turn, now we'll turn our waist back towards navel to floor and left hand. Maybe scratch your nose first, bring your hand down, and then you slide your blanket to appropriate support under your right knee. Yeah, now you can advance the lunge here. You can feel that left knee just above the ankle stretching forwards. Okay, and then if you want to start that alternating lunge pattern, you would alternate the lunge, right? And the piece of this one for me that I get a little bit internally unenthusiastic about is the reverse lunge. It's like I just kind of drop back. So feel the motion of your spine when you go forward. It's more exciting, I know. But the exhale is really as important as the inhale in your poses. So feel your approach of the knee and the leaning back and the pressure on the blocks. Push and reach. Give it a couple more times, especially when you feel that there's two different sides to the hips here. Now, the more you think about it, the more confusing it will become, but let your body kind of go through the motions of moving into the hips. And then finally, I want you to get the sense of the quadricep, that front right thigh, stretching, reaching. Yeah, especially if you have some, you know, limitation of flexibility in your thigh front, notice this stretch, stretch through the front of the leg. And now we're going to need our bolster. It's kind of far away from where we'll need it. So what you'll do is maybe slide your left foot back and get your bolster. If your blocks are in the way, toss them away. Get your bolster under your leg, the left leg, and then you'll walk your left foot over to Kapitasana, our pigeon pose, and left knee is open. Okay, we're not gonna stay pigeons, but we'll use it to get us there. So we'll use, it, use us to get us to sitting on our bolster. So cross the leg, so you come back through the cross through, and then push a blankie a little bit back behind you, and lower onto your back, and have a sandbag in your lap here. So grab some sand, have it in your lap, so that when you lower down, it's not hurting your back, right? It's in your lap. And then when you lower back, the blanket is important for your Vipa Vita Karate pose um, for your neck. So when you bring your knees to move up, if you do not want to use sand, just pass on it. You can put it away, that's okay. But if you're a sand person right now, you're gonna put it on your feet. And as you rise up the legs, you can use sand, you can use a belt under your feet if you prefer a little less dramatic pressure. But as the legs lift, the pelvis backing is balancing 
from all the last few as symmetrical poses. They weren't symmetrical recently. So we need to get back in our final set, setting of the practice, the final spinal into balancing the side. So flexing your feet, and maybe you can bring your arms open. So moving any props besides you around, moving the elbows wide, and feel the feet in that flexing position. I think the exhalation gets to be come more interesting when you're inverted. I don't know if you'll feel that experiment with the sound of your breath. Sometimes when you're lifting your feet up and the pressure on the lungs is separating, um, the sound on that exhale is, is much more audible. Of course, we can't hear you breathing, so that is okay to make a breath. Be noiseful if you prefer. But feel the feet flexing. You probably can't hear them flexing. Now give a few more moments so that blood can move from the extremities to the vital organs. So as we move to these next several moments, our focus is on completely coming into that core center, not just the muscles, but the organs. So we'll keep it real basic, but essential information that comes in to those organs to restore and rest from gravity's downward pull. Okay, now feel the legs move a little bit back towards you, towards your core, so towards your face. So feel when they're straight though, they're still up. They're not bending very much. And then feel the opposite of the legs straight up from the core. And then a little bit forward. It's a touch and go on this one. But I want you to just feel how the pelvis has its natural arch here. And then how you want to find that center. And bend your knees. And as you start to feel that leg press, feel the knees separating, feel the muscles on the back of the legs and all that warmth into that space. And the legs are pushing into the sides of the torso, right? You wanna feel that massage into the, the abdominal, the, the, um, the colon, right? Ascending, descending, that's what the, the pressure goes to. So when I move the sand away, We'll bring our knees into what would be a holding position with a block or a ball between them. And so there needs to be something between the knees, something. Now feel when the knees are in a position with the feet lifting, okay? Open out the arms, knees to the left. Feet can be cuddly together. They don't have to be separated because they like to be drawn in to touching and to the right. Feel that very controlled squeezing. It's natural if there's something stuck between them that the legs will push into the block. Go side to side for a few more moments. Great. And I'm noticing when you go through to the side when your hips are on a bolster, that this is supportive, right? And it also creates a flex spine though, right? So you're not going into spine extension. Um, so we're gonna find a little bit of that in the complete set. So when you move your knees now fully back to the center, bring your Hands to your bolster and watch out for that block so it doesn't knock you out. 
Okay. Push the bolster forward from underneath your back, push it away. Keep it so the hands can just touch the bolster. So my fingertips can touch it, my feet lower down to the bolster. And then the arms are straight down and as if they're trying to reach the bolster, okay? So can you turn your palms open to the ceiling? Try this version of the shoulders back. And now as you push, when you lift your hips up, if the knees feel jammed up, then the bolster is too close for your body, for your leg length. So I want you to find what's appropriate for your, your knees. The short ones, right? Short people, you want to have the bolster pretty close, likely, okay? So as you push to lift up, I'm going to keep a hold of that item between my knees. And as I lift my hip bones up, feel what occurs all the way through the spine, the front of the spine, and then moves to your shoulders. And now I want you to decide, are you going to get rid of your, bowl, your blanket or not that's under your head? If it feels too much pressure on your neck, just take it away for a few moments. You can always add it again. And I want you to have a uh, this rounded back developing story in your life. So shoulders are back, okay? Visualize your hands clasping. So you can get the brain cells working in that direction, but it's easier with, with the shoulders back and the palms open, okay? Now, if you can get your hands to lift up to your hips. Now, if I lift up and I have my hands right where they were, and I just uh, go right to my rear, I'm gonna grab a hold of the side of my hips and then try to nudge the hips so they lift up. It's a lot of back work in my glute muscles. Now, as the hands move down to the floor so the palms are down, we're going to lower the spine and then feeling as you relax your buttock muscles a little bit more, the spine progressively stretching down, okay? So as your spine eases, bring your knees to your chest for just the moment to get the block out, and then push the bolster over to the right side of your mat. So you might have to do a little bit of a, a game of moving bolster with foot or hands to the right. Stretch the right leg down, get your blanket under your head, cross the left leg over to the bolster. You might need a blanket on top of the bolster, so it's easier to get your leg there. But use a ball, if you've got one at your sacrum, add a sandbag to that outer left leg. Open the left arm, turn your head to the left. Yeah, feel these, this whole centering operation we're getting in the final moments here to access the hip. And sometimes getting that sand on the exterior leg and kind of uh, massaging a little bit. So you could touch onto the sand and kind of maneuver it. So it kind of jiggles the leg a little side to side, the skin. You can feel the connective tissue mobilizing. Might as well use the sandbag for something more than just weight, but it kind of gives that pressure and modulates the movement in the connective tissue, okay? Who knows, it just might help you feel better. We'll take any of those, those opportunities. So when the spine is rotated, can you let the back replenish? So let the right arm stretch open, let your head be either left or right in the center, completely up to you. And feel the moments of the crossover of the leg and the centering of the waist. Now keep in mind, even though it's the end of the session, Take a few more moments here. We're going to take the, the full time just for that hip. And if you need to go, then you might take that second side sooner. But if you have a few moments, taking that moment here, when we move the ball away, 
but you'll feel the connector, connectorship, not a word probably, but that's what my mind's thinking, connectorship. So when I take the sand away and then I turn to my back, I'm gonna slide my right foot in on the, towards my buttock and then have that figure four pose, right? So the knee is open on the left leg. But my back has a tiny bit of space. You can feel that very low spine sacrum arch. So grab your bolster and put it on the left side. Okay. And then when you switch the side of room, you want to feel that you can uncross, hold the knee to your chest, left knee, and then stretch the left leg down and then cross the right leg over to the bolster. Okay, final side. Make any moves that you think is pretty helpful for you. Now, if you swing over the leg and you're on the left side of the hip to get there, that might be helpful for your back, right? So if I'm fixed in my back, like I'm, my back has been fixed, um, and my, my back is flat, and then I take a twist, it might be a little bit harsh, right? So these are the final twists where you might notice, ah, on my back, I have a little bit more liberty to um, elongate the whole skeletal experience, right? Because do you not, don't feel like that when you sit on your sitting bones, very honestly, you probably don't feel the full body, right? You're kind of broken up. So take the crossover, you've got a sandbag opportunity here on your right outer leg, you've got a ball opportunity at your sacrum. And if you spread the arms out, and turn your head to the right. And you could kind of jiggle the sand if you want to feel what opportunity lies underneath that bag to massage the tissues, but experiment and flow the breath in and relax it out. Now feeling from this rotation, that midline starting at the left foot up through the, into the inner left thigh, and then it goes up to the pelvis, the organs, and then up through that right side of the torso. Now fine tune how your weight has crossed over to the bolster. And we'll let this be kind of our final pose pattern today, right? So it's occasionally a way to do a class is to run it to the, the ends of time with it with some vitality in the muscles because we do spend a good amount of time casual with our eyes, right? We're relaxing the eyes most of the time. So when you do start to move into that figure four pose, keep the awareness of that back, whole stretch of the back. So I move the ball and I take my time connecting to the source of support the breath. So I come back to center this time as I cross the right foot to the left knee and I move my props a little bit out to the side. Feel where that right knee is open. Feel where the hip center. And we're going to take a final uh, body kanasana, a little different. I don't think we've done, done this version before. So I'm going to scoop my bolster and I'm going to put my feet on top of it. So I still have the suggested knee angle open. Now you could put a block under each leg. You could put a blankie on you and a sandbag on your ribs if you choose. And you might decide just to center here with your arms out and your shoulders back. And B, if your back feels too much grip there, then get the blocks higher. It's about getting the legs up versus letting the legs push down for your back to feel comfortable. But as we connect into that groin stretch, right? So stretching and figure the circulation through the limb. 
breathing, maybe one hand on heart, one hand on belly, or arms by your sides. Sandbag is an option across the ribs. Give a few final moments here to bring ourselves back to a centering and even space for the breath and the connectivity of the group in focus. Now with the inhale, filtering through the nostrils, belly fills, and on the exhale, relaxing the breath out of the mouth. Now feeling the feet starting to turn themselves so that we move our knees to point up and the feet on the bolster and feeling that light lift of your legs, that lift of the back of the leg muscles and that natural tilt in the pelvis. So push into your feet so your back really presses into the floor. So it's almost like a cat spine, like a bridge pose, okay? a little bit of the beginnings of the bridge. So the energy in the lower basin of the core is very loaded and controlled. If you have sand on your court, taking that away and then motion your hands together, interlacing the fingers, turn the palms to stretch back. And your back could be still in that neutral space. Hug your knees to your chest. The hands have to go towards the legs to hug them in. Hug the legs in and roll to any side. You might rock a little side to side before you catch yourself going over and then coming up. Take a moment, just a moment to sit and lift your seat and let your knees move out and your shoulders motion themselves into that back world with the palms open, right? So similar to what we've worked with is the back shoulder space, palms open, and elevate the hands to merge in front of the heart space. Lower the brain to rest to the heart center and surrender there. Let the eyes feel that connectivity internally to your source of breath and receiving mental. Inhale together. And with exhale, bow 